hello glad to meet you again on this happy you have been able to join me here uh, so we are going back to what we have been discussing so far with Photoshop all right and this is this is um, a continuation of what we have been doing in class and here I would just want you to have a look at something that was um, uh, it was more like a, um, a fun project we we're going to use it for a flyer but then it's it, I did it through a fun project and I want you to look at it and um, we try to look at some things that we can break down out of it and then what we can learn from it and um, I know we are still in the beginner stages so don't worry we will we'll go into details with some of these things and then anything we need to follow up after we can follow up after from here all right so let me open my Photoshop and let's get right into it okay so well this is the interface of Photoshop this is not a, a, a B, um, an interface learning class anyway but I want to show you some things about it and honestly I used to be scared of Photoshop whenever I opened the interface so much to do so many tools so many things scattered all over and um, so much powerful things to do with it anyway so finally I, I got to to know how to work with it through a bit more practicing copying and looking at what others were doing and gradually I was able to get to what I was doing anyway so um, this is the final piece we are going to work with as I'm doing it we'll be talking about some things that comes across all right so um, the final piece let me just use the full screen mode and this is how it's going to look like and um, there were supposed to be some text here all right and all that but that's not what we are after right now so let me just sometimes um, you can change the background based on what you are doing I wanted to see this very well and I wanted to isolate it so I'll use the um, the background right click and instead of um, using the medium gray I, I either use dark gray um, the um, dark gray or black all right in this case I would want to use black yeah space bar with clicking gives you the pan tool so that you can move it around however you want when you are ho holding the zoom tool pressing the alt key uh, would zoom out or the option well I'm using a Windows machine so for this project I I'll be talking or anything that comes across will be possibly Windows based all right but then when we look at other things outside here I can look at it carefully and we can look at the details we want to look at okay so the tab key brings back um, everything you were working with the F key usually goes into showing the whole screen as in everything the tabs menus everything laid out toolbars you press the F key again it goes into a, a more minimal look and the third F key isolates the whole thing I remember I used to work this way because I usually wanted to see the whole image now it's more with the shortcuts all right uh, it's been a while so yeah let's get right into it so I will break down things here as we go along um, this you go to the window and you change the workspace to the workspace that is most favorable for you all right um, it could be motion graphics photography and all that what I'm using here is using the essentials default all right and there will be some things I really wouldn't want to be here I don't usually like my screen to be cluttered with things I wouldn't use a lot so in this project um, let me just close this um, group you can just click drag it out all right and then close it or you can just close the whole group all right so you see that as I'm deleting some things um, others are the, like the layer menu or the layer panel is is rolling out to be much more all right so this is the layer menu and let's start from the background okay so looking at the background it's white then I would open the rest as time goes on yeah so this is how everything looks like at, um, as at now all right so when you hold the alt key on windows or option and then you click where the eye should be it will isolate 
only that layer all right all the layers are basically like that um, as in like this so the background layer is there I mean uh, we will treat the layers and I'll show you how everything works very well with more examples but this is how the background layer is the background is the first layer then the next one is on top the next one is on top all right and so on and so forth so the layers are stacked on top of each other like this so the topmost layer here which is the final thing we are seeing is this one is the top layer right and they are like tracing papers or however you would want to see it and each layer below contributes the total thing you see on top all right so i would isolate them one by one so that i'll have a look at it so holding alt i click the background this is the background plane this is how sometimes i got so scared of photoshop i mean what do i do with all this all right and it's like it's like that with most things i mean when you want to take something for the first i want to take a step you haven't taken before it's it can get um, quite scary because you are thinking about um the unknown the possibilities and we are usually scared of the unknown or what could happen but when you grasp um, the key things you need the tools you need and you start moving on you see things get really um, interesting and easy to handle so there's the background I click the alt I wouldn't use the alt again because I would need the background to 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 be showing so I will just continue by clicking the eye for each one that means now I've isolated only the background and I'm going to be adding the other layers one by one okay yeah so this is the layer one layer two so some of them were just gathered and brought together so all right then as time goes on things are added things are removed till we get to the final stage but before this I would want to show you how I did this background so the same issue with the layers let me zoom in so that we see it well the layer and this is the the image all right and this is a picture I got from the internet and I isolated him and the cross had um, this picture from the internet as well why um, did I use a silhouette because I don't want to create any controversy and talking and um, emphasis and like attention on the image of Jesus and the cross and I, I want it to be something symbolic something easy to understand all right and um a silhouette in this form is is how how i wanted it to look like yeah then so and this background wanted something a bit not so gloomy but has that look to it and this all right but then I would want to show you um, without this mask. This is how it was. So you just right click on the mask. Well, we'll talk about masks in detail. Alright. But then masks are basically <laughs> basically masks. Like you use it to cover and then you remove some parts to display some parts. So let's look at a facial mask or a face mask. Alright, you put it on your face, it covers the whole face but then you have cut out holes where the eyes should be so then you are able to see through the mask so the mask is covering your face but the holes that you have um, punctuated or cut through the mask will reveal your eye below all right okay or yeah that's the quick um, description i can give when we get to mask we'll, we'll go into that later on yeah so that's the mask and that mask was applied and then removed uh, I used it to remove the 
the sky from this okay yeah so as i was saying uh using the 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 layer mask helps to to work out things yeah so this is the, the the background but I wanted only the, the skies and the, not the, the foreground so this is the, the one I used and I that's the layer mask that I applied to remove the skies from it right so let me apply the layer mask okay I think when you when you enable layer mask or disable it, it stays there but it's like it's covered or removed but then when you apply it permanently changes the thing you see so um, let me say let's disable when you disable you see what was there and when you uh, when you click it again it enables it but it's still there so it's non-destructive that means the sky is still there in the pixels meaning it's still chopping space but then when you apply it you see it's off now and it has removed it totally so you can do it so i usually don't work on it this one till i'm done with what i'm doing here so then i added this all right so you see the the foreground here is this the rocky part i need a bit of the grass there and i needed a bit of a sky there all right a bit of a dynamic sky all right so i added that too from an image and this is the um this is the image okay let me also disable it so that i have a look at it yeah all right so anyway part of it blended in then that's the silhouette from this okay that's the silhouette then I continued building on building on uh, changing it and that's the picture initially and just this where I got the background set up basically so that's how I got the background set up All right and um, from there is when I went on to the things now this is the image all right and this image was made with a sony rx100 mark 4 it's, it's a small point and shoot camera i think this is this is what i used this is the camera i mean it's not clear i will write about it later or we'll talk about it later on in maybe something under photography not necessarily design but it's a small camera very powerful camera and that's what i used in making this image an uh, image of one of my photo club members Kekeli all right so this is the image um, I'll talk about how we got this image in uh, later or something else but that's the image and using the selection tools I removed him from this background and brought him into yeah into the, the making of it all right yeah so then let me show you yeah yeah so we are back to this all right so this is the background in the previous um this one and here is the background yeah and then that's the image I'm trying to isolate it and then trying to add some highlights to it using the the highlights image and then the layer mask for it all right then trying to see how i can fit it to the head all right so i just went through scaling and everything alignment to make sure it aligns just on the head something i would want for it applied curves curves um, help add a bit of contrast a bit of edge to the picture so i applied that one to 
right let me disable this one so this is how it looks like all right and um of course this is really disorganized it was in a hurry and i don't advise you to do that i mean even when you are in a hurry take your time to name all the layers right? it's a bad habit <laughs> you see that sometimes you wouldn't be able to locate things easily or as quickly as you want you you, you want to work quickly to save time but it gets to a point where you need to make corrections or other edits and then you realize so many things are scattered so many things are showing through here and there they are not grouped they are they don't have names and you will suffer on waste time that you try to save all right you waste time sorting out things after edit so take note and then do that when necessary yeah so this is where i i try to cut the background of it using the double exposure um procedure we'll look at it most of you have, have been able to do that i looked at your project and they were awesome yeah so um the white and then the the double exposure technique all right yeah and then the text and for this i used let, let's let's check from the character and uh, we use the type to t for shortcut for it and then you click and then you see it was a trajan pro 3 i like the trajan because of its um you see the trajan is from like let's say the emperor trajan uh, from there we have and um, i mean the inscription they had on the trajan column so it's more like a bold strong um not so much ancient but then is is i don't know how to put it but it has this um historic feel to it it has this strength to it right with the serifs and then the the clean shapes and everything with it right and um again things like these we'll, we will talk about it and discuss when as things go up this one is just demonstrating how i went through a, a particular project yeah and um this is the text but i mean we didn't use it here right so this is the background i brought in and this is how i i i, I achieve this and then when we come back to this image all right um this from this let me hold the alt to do this you realize that i used to show some parts which are brighter than others and all that don't worry we will look at those things all right so this is the crown and i brought it also um, an image and i i erased the edges and cropped it out using the magic wand tool here the pen tool wouldn't really help because there are so many sharp pointed edges and a pen tool would really make me suffer so the basic thing i used was the the magic wand tool all right uh, and a quick selection and all that so it was able to quickly select then i just refined some parts using the pen tool it was on a white background anyway so it was quite easy to bring those things out yeah then went to the typing uh, adding the cross all right also trajan then challenge i used gray because i wanted the image or the, the focus to be on the cross and then the image all right so i like it to have more like a triangle it's, it's, it's something we usually use in photoshop i say photoshop, uh, photography to 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 bring attention to objects or things of importance and usually things that help your eye to go around helps it's more like a compositional technique also and uh, we, we usually use color can also be used quite effectively so here because of the color and the vibrance here and the gray here i wanted the the red here too so we have this moving here so color gray color gray color gray so more like that 
all right and then the challenge over here of the so of there I used a testy script because I didn't want it to draw attention so much and challenge itself was also a Trajan Pro I tried to use fewer typefaces whenever it's possible to, to keep the tone and the message clear and simple then I got this bed it's something we usually use in our tracts designs the um, significance of the Holy Spirit so I got this bed and put, put the bed also around the challenge it's a challenge and the Holy Spirit will guide you and help you to be able to bear the cross basically and also something to show here yeah. and um, so this is the final design uh, let me use black so that we can see it well and let me take off everything just press um, the F2 and everything goes off all right okay so a pensive mode thinking like something difficult to do something tough or challenging to to to, to embrace or take on and then the cross in the hard harsh terrain all right with uh, looming um, dark clouds but then there's glory after the clouds all right a lot of a lot of bright powerful and um, hopeful light sunlight beyond the looming dark clouds yeah and then but then the crown of thorns is also there so you go through this suffering but then fighting hard to achieve what is possible and what is meant for you to do or the purpose and then it will be difficult but then there's glory after everything all right yeah so that is basically that so th that's what i used for um a spotify um account thumbnail and also anchor thumbnail yeah so this is it And for any episode, I just applied a red. I filled a layer of red and then used soft light as a blending mode. All right. We will discuss the blending modes later on, but it helps to, to know what each does. Not necessarily the technical aspects and all the algorithms and all that, but how it affects. So soft light will usually affect high um, highlights and shadows or lightness or brightness and darkness All right so that's 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 it it's it's more or less adds to the darkness when it is more like f below 50 percent and then the highlight when it is also uh, um, around that but we'll take time and break things down it's just that yeah so let me show you how so this is the anchor that's how it is displayed and it's live and um, the the thumbnail for the, the, the thing and then on Spotify does it okay I decided to place it at the corner so that you have a clean look and um, that's how everything is I used a similar technique for this and added some textures wooden textures to it for for the the banner design okay yeah so that's basically that and let's say I added a text here to make it a, a, a simple flyer to give out and um, this is how everything will look like at the end of the day so it's possible to to with some basic things through Photoshop to be able to achieve these things all right and I know as you keep on practicing and putting yourself out there trying your best to 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 not necessarily putting yourself but uh, embracing the challenges and working it out let's say every day an hour every day an hour to get to a point you'll be so much better with this and uh, you'll be proud of what you'll be doing so I'm glad to be able to show you a bit of this I mean it's been a long time I did stuff with Photoshop and um, 
um, sometimes my thinking processes uh, are more or less impulsive or how I feel and how I'm working at the moment or the, 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 the knowledge I want to to, to, to to put into it. It has a bit of conceptual element in it sometimes. Yeah, so some of these things, um, as, as we keep on going and we, 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 we get um, across some of these challenges, it will be easy for us to break it down. But then over the net, I mean, all over the net, there are so much, so many tutorials from Udemy to um, Envato, PSD to Plus.com, and a lot have all these lessons, plan, and so much more. All right, so please go around and learn, and um, we'll, we'll meet these challenges and iron things out and learn from it. Okay and do your best so guys this is something I, uh, I wanted to show you so that you have a look at um, a bit of the um, process behind how I got that final thing and I know it's I mean it's not that it's not a comprehensive walkthrough but as time goes on we hope to understand some of these things and then analyze things well I mean this wasn't I wasn't thinking of making a walkthrough for this but I wanted us to just go through a little breakdown so that you get to understand a bit of things here and see how I mean the, the software can be can be used for your purposes all right so let's keep on learning that's all I can say bless you